Just to begin with, why European Union and India, and why is the prime time to actually collaborate between these uh, two worlds, one of the largest democracies? So, uh, uh, Klaus Pendel, you as a representative from the EU delegation to India. So, why do you think this is the prime time to actually foster that collaboration? And what are the three major areas of focus of the EU delegation in India at the moment, right after the uh, EU-India summit in Brussels last month? Right. Uh, first of all, thank you for, 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 for inviting me, me here for, 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 this, uh, for this session. Uh, you may not know that we pre uh, previously, in uh, end of March, had uh, a summit between the leaders of the European Union and, and India, Prime Minister Modi and his uh, European counterparts, uh, Commission President Juncker and uh, Council President Tusk, uh, which was uh, giving new uh, impetus, uh, new momentum to cooperation between uh, uh, two, uh, two countries, uh, blocks, which uh, in my view have much more in common the longer I stay in India than, uh, than it looks at first space. Uh, you, you have on the one hand uh, um, a subcontinent <coughs> nation state where uh, individual states in India have a very strong role. You have uh, 29, I think, languages, uh, uh, states. Yeah, you have uh, uh, both uh, on the on the European side. You have uh, something very unique, uh, which is neither a, a simple regional organization nor a, a nation state. It is something somewhere in the in the middle between those where the 28 member states over the last uh, 60 years have, have given the European Union successively more, more powers. But uh, basically these two sides have a lot in, a lot in common uh, from democracy, uh, strong emphasis on peace, etc. But also a, a, a lot of challenges which are the, uh, the same. Just to talk about uh, the recent events in the uh, growth in terrorism, climate change, uh, all these kind of things. And economically, the two sides have always been uh, very strongly linked. Uh, the European Union is in fact uh, the, the, the biggest uh, trading partner of India. There's about 100 billion euros uh, of, of trading goods and services between the two sides. Uh, it, it is the number two investor, the European Union in India. But uh, the number number one is not uh, China or the United States. It's Mauritius. So, <laughs> so actually, <it's laughs> you could say it's the number one investor. Uh, and uh, the the cooperation is nothing new. There was a, there was a cooperation agreement in '94. There was a, a strategic partnership, uh, and and now we are just intensifying. So, of course, in the summit uh, there was a strong focus on. Uh, uh, trade. Uh, you may have heard that uh, since years there's negotiations on a, a so-called free trade agreement, broad-based trade and investment agreement, uh, which, which is really an important part. Uh, then there was a strong focus on uh, um, uh, security, I would say, in the connection of uh, cyber security, uh, maritime security, uh, fight against terrorism, etc., migration. But then there is a, a whole uh, range of areas uh, where there is technical cooperation. And I will spare you from all the political and, and trade-related stuff. And maybe just to give you an idea what, what is in the, uh, uh, in the information and communication technologies, innovation, uh, research, etc. So, uh, basically, what we have done when we negotiated uh, uh, the, the outcome documents of the summit, which is a joint statement, uh, which the leaders agreed, and an, a sort of action plan, an agenda for action 2020. Um, at least we on our side, we, we only agreed to things where there is a concrete uh, action either, either already existing or in preparation. So we didn't want to just have a blah blah text in the, in, the, in, the, in these statements. So very concretely, uh, one, there was one element that uh, the science and technology agreement between India and the EU was uh, was renewed. 
uh, it, 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 uh, it's on the European side, it's called Horizon 2020. Uh, it's a huge program uh, between 70 and 80 billion euros, uh, to which, which is completely open to international participation, including from India. And uh, a big chunk is in, in ICT. Then we have, uh, uh, we have included internet governance, mm -hmm. where India has made a big step last year in uh, supporting the multi-stakeholder uh, model in uh, reforming the internet, keeping it open, uh, including all the, the important stakeholders for the internet, which is the economic basis of uh, our economies now. Yeah. Then uh, we have uh, included st standardization on ICT, uh, with a special emphasis on uh, cooperation on uh, 5G. So the next generation okay, on 5G we'll talk a bit later. So, uh, very good, thank you very much. So, as uh, Klaus Pendel just informed us very briefly that this is actually the prime time for the collaboration between European Union and India. And the leaders of India, together with leaders of the European Union, have reaffirmed their commitment to actually foster that collaboration and have come up with strategic partnership with different goals and aims, starting from investment to SMEs dialogue into trade and uh, and even people-to-people -people contacts, bringing education systems closer together. So uh, how we would like to organize this session. So we would like to focus on uh, establishing a favorable business and investment ecosystem that we'll be talking very closely with uh, Praveen Paranjati and also Dia Gowales. So Praveen, uh, I would like to ask you uh, a little bit about Startup Europe India Network. Okay, you as a founder and the president of the Startup Europe India Network, which is the first uh, ecosystem like that ever established between European uh, countries and India. So can you please briefly elaborate on that? Can you hear us? So, yeah, do you hear me all right? Yes. So thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to speak everyone to you, although virtually. So uh, as you rightly pointed out, Startup Europe Indian Network is one of a kind initiative between the EU and the Indian ecosystems. As Klaus was saying, uh, you know, we have a lot of similarities between culturally and also how the market is fragmented between the European Union. So we have 28 member states here, we have 29 states in, in India. And uh, certainly from the digital and innovation point of view, what is happening is we asked ourselves uh, two main questions. One is digital is global and it is touching upon every industry. So what's happening uh, in the common thread of digital uh, globalization in India and in Europe? And the second question we asked ourselves is uh, the startups are going global. So many of the startups here in the European Union and increasingly so also in India, especially the non-consumer focused startups are going global. So the question that we asked ourselves was, can the startup ecosystems remain local? So uh, for a longer period of time, both European Union and also India has been looking towards the United States in terms of expansion of the markets. But India has come of age, uh, the startup ecosystem has really started to kick off. And European Union already has more than 20 years of experience in the startup ecosystems. So we looked at to how we can connect this effectively and clearly there are key hubs in both sides of the ecosystem and the European Commission is playing a great role here in Europe. So we teamed up with the Startup Europe Initiative of the European Commission in order to establish this tech corridor between the European and the Indian ecosystems. So what we intend to do is uh, very briefly three pillars. One is the growth focus essentially for the European and the Indian startups to expand into each other's markets. The second one is the investment focus, where we work with the corporates and the investors to uh, really back the greatest entrepreneurs available in both these markets. And the third one is what we call as a strategic sourcing, mainly focusing on innovation sourcing for corporates and the talent sourcing for both the startups and also the corporates. So this is the initiative that what we intend to do is essentially uh, be a pioneering initiative out there in the market in order to establish much closer relationship between these two innovation ecosystems. And Klaus was talking about the 2020 agenda, and we are very happy to see the Startup European Indian Network as one of the reference uh, in the startup uh, for the 2020 agenda as well. Praveen, uh, it's Pranav here. I just have one particular question. When you spoke about uh, the renewed, uh, especially your three pillars, growth to entrepreneurs and all. 
Uh, what does it actually mean when you say about the 2020 agenda plan and uh, startup for uh, your network as well? What does it mean to the ICT and IoT entrepreneurs, the startups that uh, we're seeing a lot of growth in India? So how do you think uh, both European Union and your network and our network like, can actually collaborate and maybe further something? So what's your comment on that? Yeah. So uh, if you look at the Indian market, certainly there is uh, lots going on, especially in the B2C space, and clearly the Indian market is huge or big enough to, uh, to cover this for the moment. But beyond the B2C space, <coughs> also in the B2B enterprise, cybersecurity, fintech, IoT, there is a great market out there in, here in Europe. You have uh, players like Siemens, players like Porsche and so on, very much entrenched in the market. And you, you can see them as a potential partners, you can see them as potential investors, etc. There are some of these corporates already available in the in digital ecosystems such as Bosch, which has been very actively investing in the Indian market, and vice versa as well, companies like TCS and, uh, and Infosys and so on, from the corporate perspective. So what we are looking at is essentially expanding into these two markets and our, ro our role as Startup Europe India Network is uh, connecting these two players much more effectively and efficiently using our contacts, using our expertise and using our investor base.